Alright, this is an overview of what are the facet joints in the spine, why do they hurt, and what can you do about it. So, there are many causes of pain in the spine, and that can include the disc, where it causes a discogenic pain, meaning pain arising from the disc, and that's typically with leaning forward, it makes the disc push backwards and can push it, bulge it, herniate it into the nerve root. However, in the back of the spine, or the posterior part of the spine, there are these things called facet joints and they create kind of a triangular joint here. You have the intervertebral disc and then two facet joints, left and right and back. The facet joints are very much like knee joints. Uh, they have synovial fluid, they have cartilage, they have a capsule, and sometimes they can even have a meniscus. So just like the knee, you can also get arthritis in the facet joints in the spine. Sometimes this just happens as we age, but typically what I see is when the disc is degenerating and smashing down, instead of having 75 to 80% of your weight distributing through this nice cushioned disc, now it's degenerative and desiccated and it can't cushion that sort of weight. And we see that that load, the stress and strain transfers to the facet joints instead. So now as, as this becomes degenerative, about 80% of the weight will now transmit through those lumbar facet joints in the back. And that really puts wear and tear, it really grinds them down in there and wears away the cartilage. And so those can become arthritic, oftentimes secondary to degenerative disc, but sometimes just in and of themselves as well, even when there's no disc disease at all. And there's a variety of reasons for that, but that's why they hurt so much. And these facet joints, they go from top to bottom in the spine, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and their anatomy changes a little bit from going top to bottom, but in general, it's the same idea. They all have cartilage, and when they get arthritic, they can swell, and sometimes they even bulge forward where they hypertrophy and, and get effusions and where the bone gets angry and inflamed, and it tends to bulge and push forward on this nerve root. So if you have both disc disease pushing back on the nerve root like this and a swollen facet joint pushing forward, you create what's called a disc osteophyte complex, meaning you compress the nerve from both sides and that can be excruciating, especially because right here in this neuroforamen is where the dorsal root ganglion lives. That's where all the cell bodies of the incoming sensory nerves sit and have to transmit through and if you squish that, it really is excruciating. So there's a variety of ways that you can treat this. Um, number one is to basically help these facet joints be as healthy as possible. And that includes with good nutrition, so including uh, vitamin D3 so that you have good bone, so the bone is an osteoporotic, and that gives a good foundation to build and retain the cartilage on. In addition, you can supplement with collagen and glycine, both of which help build cartilage and good bone health and good tendon and ligament health. And having good core support here of ligaments and tendons around the um, entire spine. Now, in terms of if this is already happening, most pain physicians will actually do a few things that are actually detrimental in the long run. One is to inject steroids either in or around the facet joint. That will disintegrate collagen and cartilage. It suppresses collagen synthesis it basically weakens the capsule and can actually make the bone more osteoporotic. So for all those reasons, I do not recommend steroid injections. The other thing that they do is they burn the nerve that innervates the facet joint, which comes right over this structure from above and right over this structure from below to come up from the dorsal branch here and innervate this whole joint, both from top and bottom. You can burn that and, and take away the pain by burning the nerve above and below the facet joint. But that's problematic for its own reasons. Number one, you also denervate or take away the nerve from the muscle in all these paraspinal muscles that help support the core of the spine. And when you denervate that, those muscles will atrophy and they no longer support the spine with that sort of tensegrity structure that they should. And so it can actually lead to worsening uh, deformations of the spine, including kyphotic deformities. And also those nerves will always grow back about every six months and they make burn scars and you will just have to repeatedly burn them over and over again and it becomes less and less effective over time especially if those nerves become angry and neuropathic as they grow into the burn scar tissue so it's not a great long-term strategy for all those reasons 
Much better is to do what I actually do for knee arthritis as well, which is to inject right into the facet joint here with a PRF scaffolding. It basically refills the facet joint, cushions it, lubricates it, and gives a variety of growth factors to help rebuild that cartilage and to help stop the wear and tear. It includes a protein called alpha-2 macroglobulin, which suppresses the inflammation of the arthritis and that is much better than steroids. It still has an anti-inflammatory effect, but with none of the downsides of steroids. In addition, the bone marrow stem cells are primed to help rebuild orthopedic tissues like cartilage and capsule, bone, uh, ligament, and all these structures that are important for the proper function of this joint. So you can combine bone marrow stem cells with the PRF scaffolding and refill and recushion that facet joint. And that way you're addressing the actual underlying problem and not just burning nerves away and not just masking the pain with steroids for a couple weeks. Instead, you really try to help repair this facet joints um, on both sides, left and right. And that gives the best long-term strategy for improving pain and improving function. So thank you.